Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we're going to take a quick look at Wave Engine 2.50 that was just released earlier today. Now, Wave Engine is a C-sharp powered component-based 3D game engine that is completely free to use, uh, cross-platform, targets a number of different platforms, and I've actually covered this guy in the past. I'll link and show that in a little, little bit, but the 2.5.0 release was just announced, and I'm actually kind of shocked that this was out there. I didn't actually know if this game engine was still really that actively under development. I've been kind of waiting for something new to happen. So it's kind of cool to see this happening because it's actually a very clean and polished game engine, as you're about to see in a second. And speaking of which, here it is. So this is um, the Wave Engine editor. This is 2.50. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, it is completely free to use. You can see here an animated model. We are currently in play mode. I can stop that and show you the editor. Um, performance is quite solid and nice. And as I mentioned earlier, this is a component-based game engine. So over here you have your, um, your various different assets. We're inside of the assets folders here. You've got a couple different scenes. We've got a scene opened and over here you can see the basic scene graph of our scene. And it's composed of an animated model that in turn can have entities attached to it. So we also have here, for example, a default light I created. Or I could come to the top here and create a new entity. And of this entity, I could pick various different types or a completely empty entity like so. And then with the empty entity, what we can do is come down here. So an empty entity is basically just a position in space and a holder for components. So now we can go ahead and start adding some components to this guy. And then you will see there are a whole lot of components available a lot of them. Um, and, you know, at this point in time, if you've used any modern game engine, you're probably recognizing what we we're dealing with. Behind the scenes, you use Visual Studio for doing your code. It creates a C-sharp based product uh, project for you. And uh, yeah, that's it. Now, again, I'm not going to go into a lot more detail of Wave Engine. I just wanted you to see the editor and, and the environment that you're working in to see if this is kind of the thing that appeals to you. Uh, you do need to register online and you do now need a GPDR approval for them. Um, because of the new privacy policies, etc. So even if you've already registered, you're going to have to go back online and do that approval. But that's it. That's the only requirements to use this engine. I will head on over to their website for a second, and you'll see, again, um, we've got VR support, Leap Motion, 3D, and the, the key part is, once again, totally free. So you can target OS X, Android, iOS, and Windows completely and utterly free using this engine. Now, I don't understand their business model. I don't know how um, how they make money. Uh, maybe it's their services department. I'm not entirely certain. Uh, but the engine is free to use, but it is not, I believe, open source. So that's one of those things to definitely uh, be aware of. Um, now, I could be wrong on there, but their GitHub page mostly just consists of samples and examples and documents and that kind of stuff. So it does not seem to be an open source project. So again, back to the 2.5.0 release, they have a uh, in-depth version. I will link everything relevant down below, including the closer look at um, of this engine I did a couple years ago, which will actually show you in depth of how you can actually work with it. And it stayed consistent enough that most of what I did in this closer look will still be active or valid at this point in time. So I'm not going to get into much more detail there. Instead, what we're going to do is jump into what's new in 2.5.0. And instead of going through their release notes, I'm going to instead go through the ghetto version because this is a whole lot quicker. So this is basically the release notes that came with the 2.50 installer. And what you see they've added here is ARM Mobile, or AR Mobile, which is um, a, a interface towards both AR Core, uh, which I think, it, yeah, AR Core is the Google version, AR Kit is the iOS version uh, of uh, augmented reality support. Uh, they've now integrated in Bullet, Bullet Physics 3D integration, so uh, their physics engine just got a big upgrade. Uh, new model asset workflow, GLTF, so um, GLTF 2.0 support, I believe now, in addition to FBX and other file formats. Uh, morphing support, new 3D animation component, mixed reality support, so there is your, uh, that's for, again, AR plus Microsoft mixed reality headsets. Uh, and the other one, oh, what the heck does Microsoft call it? Uh, HoloLens. Uh, so it's got support for those devices now. Uh, render layers uh, enables you to... Oh, how exactly did that work? Uh, that's described over here. I'll go check that out in a second. But basically, it gave you a bit more flexibility and control over how um, the graphics rendering pipeline works with um, Wave Engine. Uh, we've also got support for raster, blend, and depth stencil state descriptions, line mesh component, uh, 
through optimized transform 3d blah 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 mostly minor stuff after that so definitely the big ones there are ar bullet physics gltf support um improved 3d animation support and mixed reality support and then of course those render layers and like i said i'll go back here and we will get into so if you go into their um actual full-blown version of what is involved in here each one in turn has another descriptor of the new stuff so if you want more details like i do in this case for render layers you can click within there and get more detail on that particular feature so most of these features go into more depth um but here you can see dude what did i say Minor layer concept was born visual editor friendly specification of how geometry and shaders are presented in the final frame so you can do things, create render layers here of opaque, skybox, alpha, additive, GUI, and debug, and set various different uh, layer descriptions on them and control how the rendering happens. So again, I will link this ultimate document down below so you can get into there more detail, but it does give you more control over the ultimate rendering process in uh wave engine 2.5.0 i think that's where i'm going to leave it today of course links as always will be down below i'll do a link to the um to game from scratch with the full release notes i just did uh that will also link out towards the full release notes from wave engine if you want a lot more details and i'll also link into the existing uh closer look at series i already did for wave engine so if you're interested in learning a bit more do check that out there's also a video version as well uh, so that is Wave Engine 2.5.0. It's amazing just how many well-polished engines out there that there are. And it's amazing how many of these are actually just free. Um, also, I'd love to know if you have any idea how they actually make money. Do let me know in the comments down below. Uh, but that's it for now. I hope you found that interesting. Let me know what you think of Wave Engine also in the comments down below. And I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.